This is the second of our five lectures on radiology. This lecture is normal chest anatomy. Here is an image of a normal chest anatomy with labels on it as to the arteries and the sections of the heart. Please take note of all of these. This is a lateral chest x-ray with the similar labels on it. Virtually all of the white lines seen in the lungs on a chest radiograph are blood vessels. Bronchi are mostly invisible on a normal chest radiograph because they are normally very thin walled, contain air, and are surrounded by air. The pleura is composed of two layers, the outer parietal and the inner visceral. The pleural space lies between these and normally contains several milliliters of fluid. There's no air in the pleural space. Neither the parietal pleura or the visceral pleura are normally visible on a conventional chest radiograph. Lateral chest x-rays are also known as the second part of the standard view chest examination. Remember, in an upright frontal, you use the horizontal beam. In the upright left lateral view, the patient's left side is against the film, also using the horizontal beam. Lateral chest x-rays help determine the location of the disease you have already identified on the frontal image. Confirms the presence of disease you may be unsure of based on the frontal image alone such as a mass or pneumonia, and can demonstrate disease not visible on the frontal image. Five key areas which need to be reviewed on a chest x-ray include the retrosternal clear space, the hilar region, the fissures, the thoracic spine, and the diaphragm and posterior costophrenic sulci. The retrosternal clear space is a clear space present behind the sternum. The hyla produce no discrete shadow. The vertebral bodies are approximately of equal height and their end plates are parallel to each other. The posterior costophrenic angles are sharp. If there is no cardiomegaly, there should be a space behind the heart and the anterior to the spine. The hilar region is difficult to assess on the frontal view, especially if it is slightly enlarged. The lateral view can help, but most hilar density is made up of the pulmonary arteries. When there is a hilar mass, such as lymph nodes, the hilum will cause a distinct lobulated mass-like shadow on the lateral radiograph. The fissures demarcate the upper and lower lobes on the left lung, and the upper, middle, and lower lobes on the right lung. When a fissure contains fluid or develops fibrosis from a chronic process, it becomes thickened. Thickened fissures caused by fluid is almost always associated with other signs of fluid in the chest. Thickened fissures caused by fibrosis is not accompanied by other signs of fluid in the chest. Major and minor fissures may be visible on a lateral film as a thin white line. Major fissures course obliquely and are then called oblique fissures. They lie roughly from the level of the fifth thoracic vertebrae to a point on the diaphragmatic surface of the pleura a few centimeters behind the sternum. Minor fissures course horizontally and may be known as horizontal fissures. They lie at the level of the fourth anterior rib on the right side only. Thoracic vertebral bodies are rectangular in shape. Each vertebral body's end plate parallels the end plate of the vertebral body above it and below it. Each vertebral disc space becomes slightly taller than or remains the same as the one above it throughout the thoracic spine. Degeneration of the disc can lead to narrowing of the disc space and development of small bony spurs called osteocytes at the margins of the vertebral body. Always evaluate the thoracic spine 
in the lateral x-ray if there is a compression fracture normally associated with osteoporosis, the vertebral body loses its height. The diaphragm is a muscle that separates the thorax from the abdomen. Below the diaphragm is soft tissue contents of the abdomen, such as the liver and the spleen. Only the upper border of the diaphragm is visible because it lies below the air-filled lung. Because the heart sits over the center and to the left of the diaphragm, you cannot see the entire diaphragm on a chest x-ray. We refer to the right side of the diaphragm as the right hemidiaphragm, and the left side as the left hemidiaphragm. The right hemidiaphragm is usually visible for its entire length from the front to back and slightly higher than the left. The liver sits under it. The left hemidiaphragm is seen sharply posteriorly, but is silhouetted by the muscle of the heart anteriorly. Any air in the stomach or splenic flexure of the colon appear immediately below the left hemidiaphragm. If a chest x-ray is adequately penetrated, you should be able to see the spine through the heart on a chest x-ray. You will know that a chest x-ray is underpenetrated or too light if you cannot see the spine through the heart or the bases of the lungs appear opaque. Remember, this artifact could either mimic or hide disease in the lower lung field, so look closely at the lateral chest x-ray. Pulmonary vasculature markings appear more prominent than they really are on a light x-ray. Remember, there should be other radiographic signs of congestive heart failure, such as hepatomegalia, cardiomegaly, effusions, etc. If the film is overpenetrated or too dark, review the indications of the film. If it was for emphysema or asthma, then the lung fields may appear hyperexpanded and therefore be dark. If you are looking for a pulmonary nodule, then you should repeat the film. These films are both overexposed, but the left is a poor inspiration and the right is just an overexposure. Full inspiration or a deep breath ensures a reproducible radiograph. The degree of inspiration can be assessed by counting the number of posterior ribs visible above the diaphragm on the frontal chest x-ray. Nine to ten posterior ribs should be visible for a good inspiratory film. Eight to nine ribs is normally adequate for accurate interpretation of the image. Poor inspiration will compress and crowd the lung markings, especially at the base of the lungs near the diaphragm. Looking at the lateral view of the same x-ray will help confirm the presence of the pneumonia. Rotation means the patient's body is turned to one side or the other. Rotation may alter the expected contours of the heart and great vessels, the hyla, and the hemidiaphragm. Minor degrees of rotation can distort normal anatomy. Marked rotation can introduce errors in interpretation. To evaluate if a patient is rotated on an x-ray, look at the clavicles in the sinus process. The median ends of the clavicles are anterior structures. The sinus process is a posterior structure. If the sinus process appears to lie equidistant from the medial ends of each clavicle, the patient is not rotating. If the sinus process appears closer to the medial end of the left clavicle, the patient is rotated to the right. If the sinus process appears closer to the medial end of the right clavicle, then the patient is rotated to their own left. Solutions are to always compare the frontal film with the lateral view or a previous chest x-ray if the patient has one. The closer an image is to the surface on which it's being imaged, the more true to its actual size any resultant image. Conversely, the further any object is from the surface on which it is being imaged, the more magnified that object will appear. In a posterior anterior projection, or PA projection, the heart being an anterior structure is closer to the imaging surface and thus is truer to its actual size. 
In this image, the x-ray beam enters at the posterior of the patient and exits at the anterior. In an AP projection, or anterior-posterior projection, the heart is farther from the imaging cassette and is therefore slightly magnified. The x-ray beam enters at the anterior of the patient and exits the posterior. A good example of this is a portable bedside x-ray. Apical lordotic view of the chest may also be used for some patients who may not be able to sit upright. The x-ray beam may enter the thorax with the patient's head and thorax tilted backward. This has the same effect as angling the beam towards the patient's head. The anterior structures in the chest are projected higher on the image than the posterior structures. You can recognize this view when you see the clavicles project at or above the posterior first ribs on the frontal image. The apical lordotic views may also distort the appearance of the heart. Size will be larger. The left hemidiaphragm, which may not be visible due to this, and lung bases appear hazy. Normally, x-ray beams pass horizontally or parallel to the floor of an upright chest study. In this position, the plane of the thorax is perpendicular to the chest x-ray beam. Some pearls of wisdom concerning normal chest anatomy are all lung markings are composed of pulmonary blood vessels. Minor fissures may be visible on both the frontal and lateral view. Major fissures are only visible on the lateral view. Lateral chest radiograph can provide valuable information and should always be studied if available. The five parameters that define an adequate chest examination are penetration, inspiration, rotation, magnification, and angulation. AP films will magnify the heart slightly as compared to the standard PA chest radiograph.